hey guys welcome back to another video so for this video I'll be showing you guys how to do a t-test of a correlation coefficient alright so the objective of this test is to investigate whether the difference between the sample correlation coefficient and the zero is statistically significant alright and the limitations on this test is basically it is assumed that the x and y variables originate from a bivariate normal distribution and that the linear that the relationship that they have is a linear one all right now to test to test and assume the value of the population coefficient other than zero then we'd have to use the z test for correlation coefficient which is something that i'll be doing in another video now the method for this test is basically given a sample of n points xi, yi. The correlation coefficient r is calculated from the formula r is equal to the summation of xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar all over. The summation of xi minus x bar squared times the summation of yi minus y bar squared and then we're gonna square root all of this guy so we just raise it to the power of a half all right and to test the null hypothesis that the population value of r is zero the test statistic t is given by t is equal to r over the square root of r minus r squared multiplied by the square root of n minus 2 all right which follows a t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom so we're just going to jump into an example a really short example so Two popular brands of toothpaste was compared by consumers to see their preference for each product. Using the summary statistics provided, determine if the correlation between each brand is different from zero. So the summary that we, are given, we have been given is that n is equal to 18 and r is equal to 0 0.32 and b is equal to n minus 2, which is our degrees of freedom. And where R was pre-calculated using the R is equal to summation formula. All right. So first we want to set up our null and our alternative hypothesis. And basically our null hypothesis would be that H0 is such that R is equal to 0 versus H1 is such that r is not equal to zero and we weren't given an alpha level in this example so we're just going to go ahead and use alpha at uh not say 90 percent confidence interval so let's say alpha is equal to 90 percent confidence interval all right so from this we'll note our rejection region first for, uh, first of all so our rejection region would be um we reject our null hypothesis given that t which is the test statistic um is greater than t n minus 2 which is our critical value alpha over 2 now given that this is a two-tailed test we'll want to make this into a three-way inequality all right so this would be our minus t n minus 2 alpha over 2 greater than t greater than t n minus 2 alpha over 2 and this will be our rejection region now what we can note is that we can note that if we flip this inequality then this will be our acceptance acceptance region rather than our rejection region all right so now we're going to go into calculating our test statistics, which is which is t is equal to 1 minus r over 1 minus r squared 
times n minus 2 square root that. All right. So this is basically equal to 1 minus 0 0.32 over 1 minus 0 0.32 squared. And all of that gets square rooted. Our n is basically 18. So 18 minus 2 gives us the square root of 16. And now working out this, we have that t, or test statistic, is equal to uh, 1.35. <clears throat> All right. So now that we've calculated our test statistic, we now aim at calculating our critical value at alpha equal 90%. So our t um, at n minus 2 alpha over 2, which is basically saying that we have t 16 and 0 0.05. And we're going to just go to our, our t distribution table and pick out this value. All right. So from our t distribution table, we can see that t 16 0 0.05 is equal to 1.734 all right so now we're going to refer back to our rejection region to see this, to see if we will accept or if we will reject our null hypothesis all right so recall our rejection region being we reject if our critical value is greater than or less than 1.35 negative value is less than 1.35 so we have a value of 1.35 greater than what's 1.734 now 1.35 is not greater than 1.734 which in this case implies that we cannot reject the null hypothesis All right so basically it is independent the x values is independent of the y values all right this is what this is basically saying to us right now all right all right guys so thank you for watching like and subscribe and if you like the video just give it a thumbs up have a good day